For us and for our tech, I think it's really been creating a plan and executing against that plan. I'm actually a pretty risk averse person, um, contrary to the typical entrepreneurial profile. I'm an attorney and attorneys tend to be risk averse and think about what can go wrong. Um, and so I like to create a strategic plan of where we're going and, um, and force my team, I have to use the word force because everyone isn't, isn't um, that way and force my team to execute against that plan. We're in the IT consulting industry, so basically what that means is we focus on large Fortune 500 customers, um, uh, companies like um, IBM, Hewlett Packard, uh, Sanofi Aventis, Merck, um, AT&T, these are all um, companies that are our customers today. And um, what we do is we do, um, we basically outsource for them. So we either execute the, their IT projects at our facilities or we provide w them with the staff that they need on a temporary basis, whether it's six months or one year, um, in order to execute their projects on their site. So most of our staff, most of our billable staff works on site at our client sites. And um, in 1999, when I came back to Artec, um, we were about a five and a half, six million dollar company. Um, while that's of some size, but these are our clients are billion and 50 billion and 100 billion dollar companies, and they're looking at a, a vendor base. It's a very long and rigorous process to become a first tier supplier. Um, to these kind of organizations. It's tougher today than it was 10 years ago, but it wasn't easy 10 years ago. And um, they're examining um, suppliers and they're examining their suppliers' capabilities. And one of the ways they judge capability is how big are you? How, where can you provide support to me? Can you give me support in 30 different states? Or can you just help me in one facility in New Jersey? And um, we really had to do um, we really had to build a business model and um, and see how we could provide support in 30 different states and build up to a certain size um, so that we could draw the attention. When we were five or six million dollars, they were really looking at suppliers who were at least 20 to 25 million dollars, you know, at that time. And so we had to have a plan to grow to that size in order to be a viable first tier supplier to these organizations. And I mean, it, the way we did it was really, again, creating a plan, really focusing on new business development, um, not um, turning away opportunities or not, you know, it really focusing on every single opportunity. We got an opportunity to respond to an RFP from a Fortune 50 company. And I honestly looked at it and I said, my gosh, they're never going to select us. I mean, we're, we've never worked with this company before. Um, we're a little five or six million dollar company. You look at the questions and you go, why would they even pick us? But we had built up enough relationships that, and we did a great job responding to the RFP. They went through a round of presentations. We did a great job responding to the presentations and we were selected as one of 45 suppliers at that time. Um, we were one of the smallest companies that they selected. Um, our competitors were half a billion, one billion dollars in size to 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars in size and we were just very tiny as compared to our competitors. And um, since that time in 1999, they've gone through three down selects where they went from 45 suppliers to 15 suppliers back in 2005, down to six suppliers just last year in 2008. And we've made the cut every single time and now that company is one of our biggest clients or our biggest client at this time. And it's really saying, okay, you have an opportunity, how can we execute on that opportunity and, and just doing it. I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs have ideas but you have to have that focused day-to-do execution.